So I actually made three drafts of my personal statement. Hi guys! So today I'll be talking about my DSA experience into Hua Chong. Okay, next slide please. So first of all, why did I decide to DSA? Um, okay, so as a scholar, I know that it's extremely hard to get into Hua Chong through the JE system. And so I thought that DSA was like one of my only ways of getting into Hua Chong. But for those of you who are not scholars, you shouldn't worry about um, getting into Hua Chong through JE because I know a lot of friends who managed to do it. So it's totally manageable as long as you fulfill the O-level point requirement. And next, I was also curious to know whether I was like good enough to make it into Hua Chong. And so I wanted to challenge my abilities by applying for the DSA and then also for sitting um, for the interview. And when applying, I also knew that if I were to be accepted into Hua Chong, then it would be a challenging two years in JC as I know that Hua Chong is very prestigious. But I was really up for the challenge at that time. And so I did apply. And lastly, I knew that I had nothing to lose um, when applying for DSA. And so I thought I might as well apply. Okay, next slide, please. And so this is how the DSA process goes. First of all, you'll have to go through the application progress, which is um, through Hua Chong's ISB. Um, and so these are what you have to submit for the application you have to attach your secondary three end of year um, exam results. And if your school has sec four mid-year exams, then you should also attach that as well. And next up, you should include all of your achievements in your field, which is um, any science or math competitions. And so I submitted my um, SMO, SASMO, and Singapore Biomedical Competition Certificates. And I personally don't think that it matters what result you get, be it like bronze, silver, or gold. I would just suggest you to include all of these um, certificates in your application form. You shouldn't be embarrassed of any of your accomplishments. And next, you should also submit your CCA records, which includes what CCA you were in and um, what position you held there and what achievements you earned during that CCA. By achievements, I mean like, um, for example, I was in drama, so I put in my SYF achievement. And take note that you're not only limited to your Singapore Secondary School CCA if you're a scholar, and if you were in the same CCA in your home country, then you should put that into, once again, if you're a scholar. And um, next, you should include your VIA activities that you participated in or you spearheaded. Uh, so for me, I joined this VIA trip organized by my school to Taiwan. And so I included that. And another thing that they want you to fill up in this part is the role you played in your VIA. So for me, I was a subgroup leader in that VIA trip. And so I included um, what my roles were during the trip. And you should also briefly explain what um, your VIA activities aim is. And the next one is hobbies. And this really threw me off during the application pro process. And also last year, I had the opportunity to join a DSA talk organized by Hua Chong itself. So I asked why this component was included. And long story short, they said it was because they didn't want students who only studied. They wanted students to have, like, in a sense, a life outside their studies. So, um, Apart from what your hobbies are, they also ask you for your achievements in your hobbies. For example, uh, if your hobby is drawing, then you can put in like winning a drawing competition, stuff like that. And lastly, you should also include your personal statement. And then next, if you are shortlisted, you'll be informed by email and then you'll sit for an interview. And these are the possible questions. Why did you choose Hua Chong and why not other schools? And what is the subject combination that you want to take in JC? And why this subject combination? 
what CCA would you like to take in JC and why that CCA? And so for this, you really have to like um, be familiar with the CCAs in Huachong. You can do that by looking at their website. And the next one is why A-levels and why not IB? And then your strengths and how you utilize them. Do you know your weaknesses and how do you overcome your weaknesses? And the last one is, are there any questions you have for the interviewer? And this is actually very important and you must be wise about the question you choose because the question you choose must show that you know sufficiently about the school, either from your seniors who are in Huachong or from browsing their website. But it also must be a question that shows that you want to know more about the school because you're interested in the school. And so um, this question, the answer to this question cannot be easily found on the website. Also, another tip is that they expect you to ask a question. So um, you should think about it now before you sit for the interview so that you won't say that you don't have a question in mind. And if you are successful in the interview, then they will notify you by email. And oh, uh, take note that this is an individual interview and not a group interview. And there's only one individual interview and there was no group interview. And there was also no selection test for my year. Next slide, please. Okay, so these are some of the challenges that I faced during the DSA application pro uh, process. First was um, making my personal statement. So I actually made three drafts of my personal statement and I had so many people check it like uh, my English teachers and also my uh, mom. And these are the tips that I have for you guys in making your personal statement. Uh, so first of all, you should, you should take note that your personal statement should actually tell the school uh, why they should be choosing you out of all the other applicants. And so in other words, it should tell the school what makes you special and stand out from the rest. So um, you should include why you enjoy doing sciences and maths. And I personally included what I learned from um, science and math, which is like how science and math impacted my life, like how it made me view the world in a different way and how it made me persevere in during the tough times of studying it. And another thing that you should sprinkle in your personal statement is your strengths. And so I compiled a list of positive adjectives that I used to describe myself. And then when I was crafting the flow of my personal statement, um, whenever an adjective was relevant, then I would just slip it in my personal statement. But you should also not overuse um, these adjectives so that you won't come off as being too full of yourself. And lastly, I just want to say that everything that you put in your personal statement must serve a purpose. And so you shouldn't be like only dumping all of your achievements and strengths in your personal statement because you will be submitting your report card and your um, certificates to the school anyways, so they can read it from there. So what I'm trying to say is that you should be explaining to your best ability why and how instead of just stating and putting it there in your personal statement. And apart from making my personal statement, I also had difficulties explaining my own unique reason on why I wanted to DSA into Huachong and why the interviewer should pick me. I had a hard time um, figuring out why I was special out of all the other applicants. And to solve this problem, I actually, I called my parents a lot. I talked to my parents um, about this entire DSA and I really took time to reflect on why I actually wanted this opportunity. And if you do take time to reflect and think about why you so badly want a DSA, I'm pretty sure you can find your own unique voice too. Next slide, please. And now I'll be sharing like a um, a few tips. Okay, so I honestly feel that it's a bit too late now for you to expand on your portfolio because um, I'm pretty sure that the entire DSA process is ongoing right now. So instead, I'm going to give you a few more tips on your personal statement and your interview 
which I think are the two most important aspects of this entire DSA process. Because um, everyone who is applying for DSA at this stage, I'm pretty sure has pretty much a solid portfolio with you. So, um, and apart from that, I don't think that my portfolio was especially outstanding compared to so many people out there. So what I'm trying to say is that your attitude and your personality will be that determining factor of whether you get the DSA acceptance or not. And so for your personal statement, you should paint a clear picture of who you are and why you want to DSA. And apart from that, you should be honest. You shouldn't be like making up um, your characteristics or some of your strengths because they will find out about that through the interview. And next, during the interview, you should be confident. You shouldn't be scared about talking to the interviewers because the interviewers are human too and they just want to know who you are and why they should choose you. So um, once you keep in mind that these interviewers are just wanting to know more about you, I feel that that will kind of give you um, a sense of calmness. And so I think you should sort of treat them like a friend, but talk to them formally. So treat them like you're telling a story to a senior. And next, you should speak clearly. You shouldn't mumble. And um, this, this is really important because Honestly, if you, were, if you were an interviewer and you listened to someone who's mumbling, then you wouldn't really have a good impression on them. And next, you should be explaining everything that you say. Because the interviewers at the end of my interview specifically told me that what they liked about my interview was that I gave sufficient details, which means that they didn't have to dig further into me. So instead of them asking me subsequent questions, I was already explaining to them um, about everything that I needed to say. And next, during the interview, you shouldn't be moving your body or your hands too much because it shows that you're actually nervous. But on the other hand, you shouldn't be very stiff either and like not move. So although it's hard, you should really try to be uh, in your natural state when you're talking. And lastly, you should smile and be polite because you want the interviewers to like you and you want to make that long lasting impact on the interviewers. Next slide, please. Okay, so this marks the end of my sharing and I just want to say good luck guys, you can do it and I hope to see you next year in Hwa Chong. Thank you. Thank you.